I started to prepare this lecture, I was thinking, you know, when we play the game, and it turns out to be an end game. Typically, we don't have too much time left on our clocks, right? Like from our tournament experiences. And we have to evaluate the position really, really fast and make certain decisions. Um, from your tournament practice, have you ever had that feeling that you look at your opponent and you see that he knows what's going on and he already has something um, in his mind how to place his pieces? He knows this or that structure. Have you had that feeling? Every game. Mm -hmm. So it's fairly totally common. And what is the difference? What do you think? What is the difference between uh, the person who doesn't really know what to do in that position and just consumes all the time? that he has left on the clocks. And the person who knows, who already know, know, knows what, what he's doing, what, what is the difference? What is the main difference? That that person knows certain structures to which he wants to lead that position. Because it's all about knowing certain positions in the end game and certain um, tools, how to win or how to draw this or that position. So today we're going to work on some positions that can happen in the tournament in, uh, in the tournament game really easy, that happened in the tournament games. Um, the positions that will have certain rules, how um, you will have to play to make a draw to win. Some of them will even have the name, like this position that you see on the screen, uh, which is called the triangulation. Already when you hear that name, triangulation, something pops up in your mind, like triangle, like geometric figure, right? So it means you will have to move with your king, most likely with the king, right? Look at this position, um, like a triangle. Um, what is the main goal of the triangle? Does anybody know? Just, just the ways to move in the opposition. So uh, trying to, like doing the triangulation, you're passing the move to your opponent. Basically, uh, you want to get the same position but with the move of your opponent. This is a very basic, um, I would say, very easy position. But when it happens in your, in your practice and you have, like, let's, let's say, less than five minutes on your clocks to finish the game, uh, you have to do it really fast and you have to be real professional in these type of positions to win. Uh, so do you have any ideas? What will be your plan of winning this position? Let's say uh, you're playing with white. How do you want to place your pieces? So we want to get the same position, right? But with black to move. Why do we want a black to move in this position? Who knows? Raise your hands. Well, black move, we can grab our position and come in and get paid. For instance, king c7, right? Then we'll play king c5. Yeah. And then we get to b6 square mm -hmm. and win a6 pawn. So pretty easy. Uh, what are the king moves to d8? King d6, king c8, c7, king b7, king d7. So pretty easy, right? This is what we want to get. We want black to move. But in this position, we have to move our king. So um, let's come up with some uh, idea. How do we get to the same position? How do we... Um, get to, to this position, but uh, with black to move. C4 would be a respect, yes. King C4, King D8. What if I play King C7? Like, let's calculate really fast. King C7, King C5, and then we get to B6, so pretty easy. How do you continue with white? D4. King D4. We can call it a long opposition. So the shorter position, if the king is on D6, that will be the shorter position. King on d4, it's a longer position. So we still want to uh, want black king to move to c7 and play king c5. That's basically the goal. What is our next move? King d5, exactly. Did we get what we wanted? <coughs> Easier, right? But in, when you play the game, so when you listen to the lecture, it's, it's really easy because uh, I give you the hints and all the right moves already pop up in your mind. But when you play the game, it's just you. You and your thoughts, your knowledge. So you have to pull out the right move from your head and just make it. So uh, 
Now we, we already know the continuation, so just real fast, let's let's see how we win here. King to b6, king b8, take the pawn, and I hope everybody can win this position. So it's it's really easy. So I would say that it was just a warming up, one of those positions that can happen in the tournament practice, and you should know how to win real fast. This is an, another interesting position. Uh, have you ever had these type of positions that you would think with white you're winning for sure and your opponent has to resign? Black to move. Let You play with black guys. Um, your last chance to make a draw. But your opponent has a, has a knight. Um, I guess you, you already understood like what, what move you have to find. Where to place your king here. If you play like king f6, then what happens? King g8 and uh, the pawn gets to h8. What, what are two moves that we're choosing from? Correct. Does anybody know for sure where to place your king? It seems to be a very absolutely easy position. Can you explain me? So tell me the move that you want to make and explain why you want to place the king there. Here you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, king f7, uh, knight c7, king f8. So our goal is to keep the king blocked in the corner because if the king uh, gets out of the corner, black loses right away. Um, keeping the king in the corner is possible only by two moves, king f7 and king f8. So uh, we are reviewing right now king f7. King f7, knight to c7, then the only move, king f8, check. Again, the only move. So this is pretty easy already, right? But when you have to make that right move, how do you come to that logic that you have to play king f7? Not even just by calculating. How can you memorize it so um, next time you don't have to recall that? It will be in your mind already, you'll know. How do you, have, um, how do you choose this move? Remember, this is a very easy hint. In order to make a draw, you have to place the king on the same color where the knight is. Very easy, but not, e not everybody knows that. So for the future, I, I think it's a pretty interesting example. So let's see what happens if you move king to f8. What is the difference? The same route of the knight. Knight is 6 Look at this position. We don't have um, f8 square anymore. We have to take the knight or move the king somewhere, and then white king gets out of the corner. Again, pretty easy, but when you don't have enough time on your clocks, and you have to make the decision, the chance to make a mistake if you don't know can be high. So um, again, let's memorize it. So when you get into this position, just place the king on the same color of the square that um, the knight is. Um, Another question will be, what if, what if your king is already on the white square here? Let's say if, if our king is on f7 already. Do you think we can make a draw? We can't make a draw, right? Because if, if the king is on f7, it's basically impossible. So we have to move the king to f8, and then the king will be on the opposite color with a with um, knight. So the only chance is you should be the second, not the first one who is on, that, on the same color. Move the king to the same color. Another example from the real um, tournament practice, uh, tur from, from the real tournament game. Um, let's evaluate the position. What do, what do we see here? So what do we know about the point end games? Let's start with that. Um, why, why two move here? I'm sorry, I didn't say uh, whose move it is. So we know about the point end games that point end games is all about calculating. When you have the point end game, uh, you should stop and just start calculating. And by the way, this is a very good tool 
to develop your calculating uh, calculative abilities. Just if you want to train um, that part of the of the game, it's sometimes not necessarily even sit and solve puzzles, but just put some um, point end game and just calculate. Don't move the pieces, but calculate. So in this end game, obviously white is much better. <coughs> White has extra pawn on d4. Pass pawn, just the only uh, question is how to win this position. So we, we want to move the king to c4, obviously, uh, because we want to push the pawn, right? But before, we need to um, force the black's king to move out of d5 in order to move the king to c4. So this endgame will be all about the tempos. Because Black has the chance to make a draw in this position. Uh, what happened in the game? White played a4. And you would think it's a normal move because you try to force your opponent to move the king from d5. Why not? But the idea is that try to save the moves, uh, the pawn moves, uh, as long as possible. If you can move with the king and force the opponent's king to step back, use that. Here, White made a mistake. Just right away, she moved the uh, pawn to a4. Let's see how the game developed. King c4, it seems everything goes well. King e6, d5. This is, every, everybody and his brother would do this move, right? So king d4, we're getting uh, closer to e5. King d6. Now, what are we going to do, guys? It seems to be that we are much closer to uh, promoting the pawn to the queen, right? Seems like king, king will move to d7 and then we'll move to e5. How to achieve that? So, what are we doing now? Now we have to move the pawns, right? Another question which pawn do you move? From okay. We, um, how many squares do you want to move oh, each one? I haven't figured that one out yet. Let, let's calculate. Let's say we move h4. With, we put the pawn on h4. Um, black plays h5. Let me show you. So h4. Say h5. f3, right? The only the only move that we have left, and g6. Did we get any closer to e5? Let's play, let's try to get, to break through. So um, the other thing, if it happens to you and you know that you made that mistake, uh, don't sit there and think, why did I make that move? Like, it's all bad. Just you will do that later after the game. You will review your mistakes and you will tell yourself, well, that was a really bad thing, I did that. But once you're dealing with that position, just continue to deal. Forget what you did in the past. Don't think about that. Because sometimes we're getting too much like focus on those mistakes. Like she made that A4 move, which was obviously a mistake because she didn't save that tempo for her, um, like the winning move, her tempo to, to get to E5. Still, you have chances. Maybe black will make a mistake. Maybe triangulation will work. Um, let's see, how can we move here? King c4, the only move, right? Um, maybe black can make a mistake. We don't know. So the right move, obviously, is king c7, trying to uh, keep that opposition. Where would you like to move? King c3. If I play to uh, d6, king d4, and then you force me to uh, move my king from d6. King d7. King d3. Okay, again, king d6, king d4. Again, winning chances. If I move here. Well, you can try king c4, king c3, but um, as long as black doesn't move to, d to d6 here um, before the king moves to d4, black is good. So um, the, long short, uh, the long story short, a4 was a mistake. Instead of playing a4 and losing that important pawn tempo, uh, white should have started just uh, pushing the 
black king away um, just by using the king. Remember from this endgame, don't lose those important tempos, like pawn uh, tempos, because if you lose that, there is no way. Pawns don't go back. The only chance um, to win it, it will be a uh, just save those tempos. Let's go back and let's see how we could have won this position. Okay, this is the beginning uh, of the of this end game. Instead of a4, why don't we play just king c3? Obviously, black's king is not going to. Um, e4 because otherwise it will be a um, black's king has to block d5 just has to do that let me show you what will happen how do we play and now the right move what is the right move King d5. king d5, not d5, because d5 loses. King d5 and then king e6 and um, d5, d6. Again, be very careful and attentive when even it seems to be winning. That's why king e4 is impossible. King e6, king goes back. What's our move? King c4 right away. We're not going to lose that opportunity and let um, our opponent just to go back to d5. If we have the chance to control d5, we just go right after that. What's our next move? d5. Pay attention. We haven't moved any of the pawns yet. Seems to be very easy, but you know what? Sometimes we make the mistakes in a very simple positions, very basic positions that um, we just, we think it's winning, but don't stop for a second and um, think about that. King d4, king d6, right? What is the difference now? Do, do you remember the previous position with a4? Now look at this position and you, uh, obviously you see the one difference. The pawn is still in a3. This will be our winning move. This is how we're going to break through and to go to e5 and force black's king to step back. Why to move? Any suggestions? Which one do we move? Again, hard question. In order to answer, calculate a little bit. You want to play a4 here. Let's see. Let's see how it works. I'm going to play a4. Um, I'll play g6. Next move. h3. OK. h4, I play h5, and then f3. Okay, let's return back. Do I have any other options here how to um, save the tempo? Obviously, if I play h5, you meet me with h4, right? And then g6 um, and f3. Okay, any other moves that I can have? Oh, uh, let you know what? Let me try. Well, if I if I play um, king d7, you play king f5. So I I, I think your uh, idea with um, a4 works too. So what happened in the game? Uh, in, um, white shoot. I I mean this uh, line never happened in the game, but this was the winning line in the game. She made that mistake a4. So h3. But uh, I think a4 is winning too. With h6, h4, we we had a very similar line. g6, f3, and then a4. Obviously, we didn't. So what did we learn from this example? Okay, going back uh, to the original position, 
when you have a pawn end game and you have an extra pawn, try to promote your pawn with the help of the king as far as you can and then use extra tempos um, that you, you have left with, with your pawns. Just try to memorize that. That's the kind of the rule. Leave, the, leave that weapon for later. Advance as much as you can with the pawn. Now we're getting uh, to another example. An another position that can easily happen in the tournament games. I mean, it happens many times in my practice. Um, I'm pretty sure that it happened to you guys. Since I got a rook, I'm, go I'm going to win. Um, the pawn is not too close to the second rank that it's going to win, so I have plenty of tempo, uh, tempos to win. Black played king to f2. How would you play in this position? Um, and why? Because you have different options. Can you win here? Can black make it wrong? Which piece do you want to uh, bring closer? Raise your hands uh, if you have any uh, idea. You play with white. Let's say you have one minute left. You take some seconds to think and then you just have to make a move. And what is the price for the wrong move? You lose half point, right? It's draw if you don't find the right move. You would play king d4. Okay, let's let's see. King king d4. That can be an option. I have the only move. I have to rush with promoting my pawn, otherwise he'll come closer. Okay? What's your next move? I mean if you uh, offer a move, try to support the move with some line. Just yeah. don't don't uh, offer just one single move. What's the next move? Rook F8 check. Um, I'm sorry. This is this is not me. That that wasn't planned. Okay, play here. So King D4 uh, a little bit too far. Yeah. Just obviously not our move. Yeah. King D3 is better. Okay, King D3. The same, I play G3. I, I don't have any other moves. I have to play G3. Rook F8. Can you uh, advise me anything in this position? How would you play with black pieces? Try to think not only for yourself, but for the opponent, because I know we're trying to think about uh, for white, because we have a rook, want to win. But your opponent dreams of a draw. And we'll be very happy to make a draw in this position. What are our options? Uh, we have three moves, right? Not too many. So which move would you prefer? King e1. Um, I don't like king g2 at all because it gives time for white to get closer. King g1, the same story. So king e1 looks a kind of given some chances, maybe some helps for a draw. So l let's see if um, if it works. How would you play uh, with white? King oh. e3. King is free. With black? G2, the only move. Otherwise, it's lost. White? Uh, rook a8. What is the response for rook a8? Queen, right? And then white will be dreaming of a draw. <laughs> so we have to find the right move. Don't give the chance for your opponent to be too happy. We have the only move, right? Rook g8. Black. King f1. Okay. 
looks like a draw, right? Because if you bring the king, then I'll queen, and you'll have to sacrifice your rook. Um, if you give me a check, I'll just go back. Let's say if instead of king you won, so this is drawish position. This is how easy um, you can make a draw if your opponent doesn't follow the right line. Oh, excuse me, that's the mouse. So if instead of um, king e1, I play king g1, how do you win here? And um, do you have any chances to win, actually, this game? King of 3 let's see. Um, how can I play here to maybe? King of one. King g3, king g1, and rook of two. Let's see. What is interesting, look at this. Give check. Rook of two, right? Okay. I play here. What's that? And stalemate. Not that easy. We have to be, again, uh, really careful what we're doing. So play here. Then uh, maybe instead of king g3, you have some other idea. Do you think we have some chances maybe try king, um, king e2? I'm sorry, is it? Okay, it wasn't. See, it's, bl it's black smooth actually, so we, Maybe instead of king f3, king e2 here. Because king f3 seems to be a good move, right? Because you're provoking king f1, king g3, but then uh, by pretty easy calculation, uh, it was a stalemate. What's your next move? Say, move here. Okay. And then king of two. Okay. Any any other chances for black? Do you see any other strong moves that we haven't reviewed? King g one going back. What's your move? Well, if you leave the rook and the king here, it will be draw. So we have to move somewhere. <laughs> King of three, the only move king of one. Okay, rook a8, this is what I wanted to hear from you guys. Yes, rook a8. If I queen, then rook a1 checkmate. Um, if I uh, put in a knight here with a check, can you win here? Yeah. Who knows? So it's interesting, it's trans transposing. Do you see how fast the end game can transpose? You think you were playing the rook against the pawn, now you play rook against the knight. That's why you should keep in mind all those main positions, main um, structures. What is the idea? How, um, like which structure gives draw uh, to black? How do you place your knight and the king? Do you know guys? Raise your hand, please. I want to see the hands. Who knows how to draw with the knight and with the king um, against the king and the rook? Okay, one, two. Three. Um, okay, it's pretty easy. If you play, if you switch the knight and the king places it will be drawn because you'll be able to give the checks to the king all the time. So imagine your knight on f1 and the king on g1 that you'll be able to give a check on um, h2, then the king gets to g3, then uh, back knight f1. So just so in your mind switch the king and the, the knight. That is the drawish uh, structure. So don't forget about that. Um, just switching the subject for a second. Uh, when you have a bishop and the, and the king, how do you defend your position? 
is it different the structure how how um, you place your pieces to make a draw? Bishop and the king. How do you place the pieces, guys? So we place we put king in the corner, right? And then the bishop is kind of covering the king from both sides. Uh, there are two lines uh, how the king can get attacked. So that's why we place the bishop right next to the king. But the king is in the corner. Don't uh, confuse these two positions because when the knight and the king, the king is uh, one square from the uh, corner, the knight ne next to the king. But the bishop, the king is in the corner and the bishop is next to the king. So just don't confuse because if you confuse, um, it's lost. So let's, let's play this. My move. I'll play here. How do you play with black? What did, what did this red? Check from A1. So basically you have just one move. Knight, knight E2. If you play king to E2, what happens? Pretty easy. Do you see the line? Rook A1. Oh, excuse me. Rook A1. Knight moves to F3. Then you give the check from A2. King gets through and you win the, uh, the knight, right? Easy. So the only move that we can make here is knight to e2 check. Why to move? Okay. And most likely, this, this have very good chances for uh, black to draw this game. Let's return back for a second. Look at this position. What is the other option that we can use here? King is three, right? So we tried uh, one continuation king to g3, another one king to e3. Always try to, if you have time, try to check both. Don't think that if you calculated one, it's just winning. Maybe uh, you missed something. So that's why if, if, you, if you have like a minute, just look through the other one too, especially when you have just two. Um, what happens if I play um, knight to e2? Real fast, just really easy, just one move. Rook a1. Um, what happens if I play with the king here? <coughs> Do we have chances to win here? How will you play, guys? Who thinks that we can win here? Raise your hands. One person. Uh, do the rest think that it's a draw? We shouldn't say we don't know. We should have a, an opinion. So th who thinks that it's winning? You know, there is no third, third I'm not giving you third option. Uh, who thinks that it's winning? Okay, I'll think it's One person. So the rest think it's draw. Okay, let's see. Uh, since we have just one person who thinks it's winning, let's check. Uh, how, how are you going to win? Okay, so we have one person who said that it's winning, so uh, um, try to win. <laughs> Rook g8, all right. Um, I have a couple moves here, actually. Let me try with this one. Your next move? Rook g7. Rook, um, excuse me. Rook G7. Um, let me try with the knight here. Do you think you can get with the king too close now? King 
King E2. Yeah. All right. Um, check from here. Then King to F1. Let's see if I go back. Uh, to maybe rook g4 now. What happens? Rook g4 is the right move here, because I don't have any right, any good squares. But can move here. Not that easy to win, right? So we were talking about that structure earlier, right? So the king, uh, one square from the corner, and then the, um, the knight next to the king. Not that easy. I, let, let's try diff different um, ways here. So let's say if you attack from g3, then king goes back. And uh, what is the beauty of this knight on h3? The knight from h3 controls uh, f2. It doesn't let the king move to f2. If the king tries to get to f3, then um, the king will be checked from g1. Let's see if we have any other moves. So um, instead of rook g7, do you have any other options? Maybe we can try something um, different. Excuse me? We play king f2 here. King f2. Play here. Yeah. If king f3, then, king, uh, then knight g1. So going back here, and then obviously it's it's really hard to um, strengthen the posi uh, position. So check, king moved here. Let's see if we give check what happens. Do we have any chance here? King to g2. How do we move here? Not really too many options to win, right? Because so going back, then king moves here, and then always have this knight h3 trick. Uh, let's return back because we still have some positions to review today, and we haven't finished this rook end game. So if, if you are curious, I mean, just um, after the lecture, when you go home, you can open this um, knight and the king against the rook and the king and just work on that. So um, king, king f2, why to, play, why to move? What is the winning move? How do you win this position? Rook to a2, check. Rook to a2, let's see if it works. By the way, uh, Karchnoi played with wide. Um, I, excuse okay, me. Actually, actually, how about how about we play king to d3 first, and then when they run down the pawn, then we'll play uh, rook to a2 check. King d3. Yeah. Here. Now, yeah. And the difference is we we might be able to get them in a mating net at the end. Okay, that that can be a good idea. Uh, king to. If I play king f1, what what happens? We can get it to. Uh, the same position, like king f3, right? G2, king f3, then if queen, then rook a1 checkmate. We, we already went through that, so I, I think uh, it doesn't make sense to uh, show it on the board again. Uh, then if the, um, a little bit different if, if it's the knight, well, may, maybe it makes sense to, uh, to show. Look, look what happens. King f3 and then the knight. What is the difference with the knight here? The rook is on a2. So that, that is uh, the difference, so it may help us. Just uh, keep it in mind. But guys, the main difference between us and Karchnoi that he figured out the right move right away. So we're trying to choose, well, maybe we should bring the, uh, the king. But such players as Karchnoi, they, they know right away what they do. Rook f8 check. Nobody even uh, said that move. You tried king d4, king d3, rook a2, all kind of moves, but nobody said rook f8. What do we do next? Rook g8, correct. Who said that? What is the difference now? 
we bring the king, but we already won the temple because the rook is already on g8. So the only move, g3, because if the king blocks on g3, obviously you bring the king and um, nothing good happens. So g3, easy, rook f8. King e2. Okay. Um, I will play with black and you should find the right moves because it's, it's already winning. So let me play with black. How can you win? Rook g8. King f3. That's right. King f3. g2. Now rook g8. But I have this move. King of two, correct. So do, don't take the pawn right away. Just <laughs> calculate the last moment. Okay, let's go back. Uh, instead of this move, I play here. King of three, correct. G two. Where the right move? King of two. Okay, correct. Uh, what seemed to be pretty easy, but um, still needed some work to do. Yeah. This is another theoretic position that we should know. So let's say many positions before that, before this one, were pretty easy. So just if you, if I gave you like five minutes to concentrate, you you would probably find the right move. Um, this one, you should know how to place your pieces when you play with black and when you play with white. Uh, raise your hands who think it's draw. Again, I, I just got one person who thinks, who thinks that it's draw. Who thinks it's winning? Everybody else thinks it's winning. Um, it's theoretically, theoretically, this is a draw. Uh, practically, you can you still have the chance to win because to begin with, you ha we have extra exchange with white here, and I would recommend even if you think that, well, most likely it's already a draw, or you already know that like after this lecture, for instance, it happens to you in the game and you know, yeah, it's a draw. Play till the last chance. Because uh, nobody gives you the 100% um, that your opponent knows that it's draw and knows how to make the draw. So what you should memorize in this type of positions, the bishop should be on the long diagonal, always keep your bishop uh, on this long diagonal. The pawns, g6, h5, th that's kind of ideal position. Uh, with the pawn on h7, white have uh, more chances to win. If you play with white and your opponent uh, hasn't pushed the pawn to h5, try to prevent that by playing g3 to g4, okay? That's another uh, thing that you should know. If white's king uh, trying to get to g5, where should you place your bishop? On f6, correct. Some basic rules that you should know. Now let's go over this end game and you will see um, the ideas how you can try to get through this fortress and how you should defend that. Uh, H4, it's kind of, you know, this move, why is it good? Because you you promote the pawn, you push the pawn closer to the king, and um, anyway, your ultimate idea will be to play g4. Because it, obviously it's not, if your opponent knows that he has to prevent you to go to g5, it will be pretty hard to win. So you have to play g, g4 at some point. Bishop a1, um, you keep the, your bishop on this long diagonal. Rook to b4, what is the idea? wants to play g4, wants to uh, break through this pawn chain and uh, create the weakness on g6, attack the weakness, and um, finally get to the point where white has a rook and the pawn on h4 against the bishop uh, and the king, trying to win that. King g7, we play g4 with white. <laughs> um, objectively, it's pretty easy to play with white. With black, you have much more stress because you have to hold it. Rook takes. King h6. If uh, bishop moves to b2, what is the right move here? 
h5. We, h5. So h5 is the straight. King h6, uh, the only right move. King, king h7 was a possibility too, but king h6 is much better uh, because we want to get closer to where? To h4 pawn, right? So the idea of black is, is pretty simple. King h5, then you attack the pawn uh, with the bishop, and then uh, the bishop against the rook. Probably your opponent will uh, play that another 50 moves to prove that, it, that uh, draw, but we already know how to make a draw with the bishop and the king, right? From the previous example, we talked about that. Rook g5, kind of trying to prevent the king to get to h5 and get to the pawn on h4. Uh, bishop d4, king f7. Bishop f2, try to bite uh, not to allow white smoothly uh, take over in this position. So attack this pawn on h5, uh, h4. Don't, don't let white uh, grab all the pawns here and uh, keep this h4. Now, what is interesting, uh, here it's already drawn. Let's recall, what, what are the main, um, the main things that we have to memorize from this position? How to uh, create this fortress? Keep the bishop on the long diagonal. Try to place your pawn on h5 and g6. Um, when white's king tries to get, to break through and get to eight, uh, g4, uh, g5 from f4, uh, control g5 with the bishop uh, from f6. So, but this position has many other variations. Um, you can see this position with the pawn on h7, which makes uh, the, um, um, like white play much easier because the king doesn't have this h7 square and then you play g4 so you try to um, just box your opponent and um, get through that but still just try to memorize at least just the main uh, things how to um, hold this position when you play with white and you see that your opponent knows the structure well, try to play g4, uh, trade these pawns and attack g6. Ma maybe you will uh, be lucky and just win the pawn on g6 and um, keep the pawn on h2. Uh, so our lesson is almost over and um, I wanted to remind you again about in the end games, what, what do we have to, what do we have to do? How do we memorize? Do we memorize like the moves? No, we memorize the ideas uh, and you should hold always like um, pay attention to at the ideas like in this position the idea the bishop on the long diagonal at least memorize something in the point end games returning back to this don't uh, don't rush with uh, losing your point tempo um, in the rook end games we haven't reviewed one position I wanted to show you um, but in the rook end games they are considered to be the most complicated so just uh, try to know certain positions that you want to bring your uh, position and just try to um, know what pieces you have to uh, trade, what pieces you'll need, which position you know. Try to get to those positions. Mm -hmm.